Here we go again, guys. Um, this is part two of your segmentation lecture in week four. Um, again, this stuff gets me very excited because the bottom line is uh, every time you think of marketing, you should go customer, who are they, who's the target market. Um, in any analysis, any situation, you have to have a target customer. So knowing who you're going to spend all your money on trying to persuade, entertain, create awareness, reinforce, build relationship is a harder marketing. So this is what you need to do, especially for your assignment. Um, I want you to say, all right, who are the people that travel the most to South Pacific um, areas who go on reef trips? Who are the people that are aquatic by nature or who aren't and want to be um, involved in the ocean type activities but afraid of getting wet or can't swim. So guys, this really gets us to focus on who we're looking at. Now, again, yeah, you've got the segmentation, targeting, positioning, the STP model, that's just it, that's what we do. We've evaluated potential segments. Prior to this, the Chinese tourist um, segment was massive in Australia. I mean, if you guys were listening to the news, you'd realise Apart from what are the Chinese students are worth um, to universities directly, they go and visit all the country, they tell their parents, massive opportunity. So again, positioning. How do you position an activity to say such a massive group? That's a not so subtle hint. So again, guys, we've got to evaluate potential segments. And this is where uni students and first year courses usually go, oh, they've got to have sales potential. It's all about the money. Remember, show me the money in our lectures. This is it. We need revenue. We need market share. The pie chart, my all-time favorite um, graph, is the way to go. You have to make money. You make money by people buying stuff. You make people by buying it repeatedly. That comes to your volume. This is it. You guys work in retail. You work in, oh, sorry, what a shit example that was. Pubs, clubs, cafes. Um, yeah, we will work there again. It's all about turnover, guys. So you have to do this. So all they have here is just a couple of key terms like the served market. Oh, gee, I hate this thing. Market potential, industry maturity. Look, these are all high-level organizational um words um, yeah, that higher managers use. But this is the big one I like. I'll highlight it in green. Share of voice. What is the amount that your organization spending versus competitors? And McDonald's, look, is a classic example. Coca-Cola, they use promotional spending as a weapon. They buy all the top media, get all the influencers, whoever they need, and the smaller guys just can't get access to cut through. That's why digital influencers is a, 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 a runaround, a workaround strategy to get directly to your generation. Now this, guys, the competitive situation for your assignments, what I want you guys to look at is say, well, what activities could compete? Like, get on, um, your, I'd go to say Fiji, Samoa, Vanuatu, Tonga, Hawaii, and look up the top 10 most popular activities, or the top 20 activities. They're your competitive ones. Have a look which companies are doing it. Use their logos to put on the positioning maps, which I'll show you. But the moment you start putting competitors on these maps, you realize they're there to pick up any dissatisfied customers or if the market's expanding, um, to pick up more than their share. Now, you, we get to select target markets. This is, this is it. Remember, we are hunters. We are targeting these guys. We're going to hit them with a message they can't refuse, an offer they can't refuse. We're going to use all of our marketing ability to say, hey guys, come and jump into our sub, right? Come on, you want to. You want to see the little fishies under the ocean. Bring your family. They'll never forget it. It's a great experience. That's the way to go. BMW for years, uh, their pitch would be the ultimate driving machine. And they have cars at different targets, older guys, execs, young guys, um, as the second car. So this is the part that, to me, I immediately just go, who's your customer? That's it. That is just, who are you aiming at? And once you know who they are and you say, you're the guy, that's when we play. That's when we get to positioning, which is the 
the part that I just absolutely love. All right, here are a couple of practice questions, but this is it. This is where it all happens, guys. You do this properly, you're a Spartan, you're a king, you're a champion, you're a winner, right? Because this is the part where most people screw up because they ignore the absolute fundamentals. Now, let's have a quick read. The market targeting stage will provide organizations with a clear understanding of the best protective mark segments. And this is it. Who are we aiming at? Remember, we've taken that really out of focus picture of our customers and um, we've got it. It's clearer, it's clearer, it's coming in focus now. It's like missile lock. If you watched any of the Top Gun movies, whenever a jet fighter has acquired the target, you hear the software say, missile lock. This is what we're doing. We're not going to blow the customers up, but we're locked on and we're going, now let's make our offer, our value proposition more attractive. And this positioning is the fundamental, this definition in green, guys, Positioning describes how target markets perceive the organization's offer relative to competing offers. Nike shoe, Nike shoe versus Reebok. You're sitting there in front of you. Um, Adidas versus Nike. We know Nike shit. Um, we'll go Adidas. Or will you? Vans versus Converse. Um, Crown Lager versus VB. Fat Little Lamb versus a Goon Bag. I don't know, guys. Whatever example works for you. But this is it. And it is how customers distinguish the offer, products and brands from competitors. This is the classic, we go back to our consumer behavior model, choice model, where you have all the brands you know, then the ones you like, then it comes down to two or three that you really like, and the one you decide. This is where it gets real, right? Customers got a credit card, they're sitting online, and they're going, do I buy the Nike, do I buy the Vans? Where do you go? Do I get the Mac? Do I get the Kylie makeup? Sorry, I've got no idea when it comes to that. Uh, or the Jeffree Star. What do I do? And this is, we can draw this on positioning maps, which explains it so easily to anyone. And it totally clarifies what advertising appeals will probably work. Because we know what attributes work the best. And I'm going to do... Next week's tutorial, I'm going to show you, I'm going to put up a tutorial exercise on PowerPoint. I want you to see how I do positioning. I'm going to get you guys to do positioning maps uh, for a couple of products. And that is exactly the same activity as you're going to do when you do your assignment. Now, the other thing is, um, Kieran, one of the students made a good point. He said, Elias, what's the difference between a gap map and a positioning map? Nothing. A positioning map will show all the competitors and competing activities. A gap map is exactly the same thing. We just use it to say, okay, say for a new service like an eco service, where was that missing from the established marketplace? Um, it's exactly a positioning map with um, all the existing competitors and offerings and we just put our new one on it. Um, I'll go over it in the example as well, but realistically, for the sake of your assignment, if you call it a gap map positioning map, I'm not overly upset with it, okay? Now, again, guys, here are some of the fundamentals. Organizations pursue positioning to manage just how it's compared. Why, how in the customer's head does it actually make a difference? Uh, why, uh, when I hear Rolex, I go overpriced um, status brand. Uh, my son, he's Rolex, he goes, that's what I want to be wearing. Um, again, these are the things that different brands mean different things to different people at different stages of their life. Now, the next definition is the biggie. It's the same thing. Positioning describes how it's perceived by the market relative to its competitors on the attributes customers regard as important. The exercise we're going to do, guys, is identifying six attributes that we think really matter for each individual target group. Price and quality are always there, okay? But when you're talking a Rolls Royce, price isn't that big a deal because these guys are rich people. I was going to use another word. Um, we know that. So what is it? It's prestige. It's status. Um, Self-esteem. Um, you know, or it could be peer expectations, whatever. 
So this is the shortcut. That, I love this. This is one of the most important. Positioning enables buyers to take a shortcut and arrive at decisions without thinking it too much because they've already got this in their heads most of the times. You know and have already made brand judgments um, and product judgments on most of the things that you actually do. You just don't realize you've done it, right? It's This is automatic for a lot of you. You've already got, and this is when, you, especially you younger guys, if someone mentions a brand, you go, oh, that's shit, that's crap. Um, losers wear that. You've already positioned them on the positioning map in a place that have no relevance to you. Um, so again, guys, let's have a look at this. Now, here's your classic. This is just the same model again, but what they're trying to show is that depending on the, the segments, you can actually change your appeal. Now, you might have three target groups and three different positionings. BMW, the three series, might be targeted to a young aspiring executive as you got a great job, you work hard at uni, now show it, you're winning. To the person who's already had five BMWs, has a family, three kids, it might be it's the wife or the husband, whoever the stay-at-home person is, um, it's their second family car. Um, it might be also the kid's car, who knows? This is what we're saying, it's just saying that a large company can change the message and today with the digital um, channels and, and so forth we have, we can target groups extremely effectively and they don't even know what messages are going out to others. Most of you haven't even looked at any television commercials, right? Because that's just too hard to turn the television on. You wouldn't know what they're saying about you there. Radio and so forth. Um, digital messages customized to you. No one knows what you're getting there. Now, determining each segment, perceptual mapping is what we, perceptual mapping refers to actually using survey results um, for putting attributes and identifying what really matters. Now, this section of the book has always been very confusing and I've never really warmed to it. Um, they, put brand, they put comments out here and then they try to match brands based on customer uh, perceptions of it. Look guys, I don't get too excited about this. The reality is um, you could quite easily with a survey just say, guys, which are your preferred brands? Why would you buy it in this situation? You can come to it. Um, perceptual maps are exactly the same as positioning maps, except they are based on actually um, surveying your customers. A positioning map is companies doing this from experience um, and putting it down on paper. I'm calling it a um, positioning map for our assignment. If you happen to get um, enough feedback from family and friends on what this tour ecotourism um, activity is, you can then call it a perceptual map because you've got actual data there. Now, analyzing current position, guys, look, it's fairly obvious when you do this. This is better explained when I actually show you um, the worked example on the PowerPoint. It's absolutely critical you have a go at the exercise next week and you have a look at what I'm going to show you um, on when I record the PowerPoint activity. It's one of the best exercises um, we've done in class. Kids have gone, oh, that's easy. Before I, I finally figured out that you guys need to see it live, um, students really struggle with the concept. Okay, so please make a point of looking at it. Now again, a couple of more questions. Definitely have a look at these. Um, yeah, they're just nice practice questions. Um, and they did say, look what the multiple choice I usually pick. Now, the one thing that, as a study tip, I'd seriously consider you guys um, starting here. Really, I mean, I, I understand why a lot of you go, the textbook bores me. There are parts, and this is an extremely good chapter compared to others. Um, I get it, right? But this, if you're going to take a shortcut, do it here. And if I was studying for a multiple choice exam, this is critical for anyone who is doing marketing. Guys, get a family member, Skype, whatever, test you on this. This is our language. This is our jargon. Market specialization, positioning, product specialization, psychographics. You don't understand this. You're not a marketer, 
right? It, it's that simple. And you haven't done marketing at uni. You've been wasting your time and donating $1,500 to the University of Wollongong. You have to know this stuff. Um, this to me is just must know, as I said. Again, some more case studies, but guys, advanced activities, um, you can have a go with this. Marketing plan activity, website, um, Australia's Peace. There's some really good stuff here, okay? Um, have a look at it, but honestly, guys, make sure you see me in action when I start doing the PowerPoint um, examples, especially once you learn how to do this technique and understand how we juggle attributes depending on who the actual car target market is and what they want, marketing is easy. I mean, seriously, I just go, this is just really simple stuff. If you've learned the fundamentals properly. If you haven't, you're always going to just talk shit uh, with no understanding of what really matters to your customer. And um, my job is to make sure that when you open your mouth, you're in an internship, going for an internship or a job, they go, wow, this guy or girl is on fire. And that's it, guys. All right, to uh, you know, success in business and understanding fundamentally one of the, the most important concepts in marketing, it's the last two sessions we did. All right, guys, I'll uh, put this online and see how we go.